Blade Runner, the original. Blade Runner, the OG runner. I watched the OG final VR. cut. What version did you watch? Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Because it wasn't until after I watched it I saw that there was like four different ones. Yeah. So was there was there narration from Harrison Ford in the version you watched? I don't feel like there was. Okay. Was there a random unicorn scene in the one that you watched? Uh how did it go? It was like him having a vision of a unicorn running through a field. Yeah, I believe there was a unicorn. Okay, so I think... It's been a while now. <laughs> I think we watched the same version. Okay. I... I, I do I do remember there being a narrator, but I, so I guess it could be Harrison Ford. Hmm. But I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not. I do... The, the unicorn does sound familiar. We'll go with that. I felt like a real big dum-dum watching this movie because... Oh, really? It didn't make any sense... It felt so all over the place and just this big jumbled mess. Yep. And then I yep. realized, I was like, oh, no, this is a pretty common response. Because I went into it hearing that people, you know, understanding that people love it. And it's like people consider it to be this great movie and like one you have to see. And just I never saw it. Strongly disagree. It is awful. It is so boring. I did not care for it. I fell asleep at one point and had to go back and rewind it for 30 minutes to get caught back up to where Oof. I was. And I just... It, That's it rough. Was, it was really hard to get through. Um, why don't you break down the plot a little bit? At least what you understand the plot to be. Oh, okay. So bas- I'll try to remember. Basically, Harrison Ford is known as a Blade Runner uh set in this world where there are robot replicants what are they robots yeah. replicants yeah. that's what that was one of the things i wanted to ask you are replicants robots or are they clones or are they somewhere in between are they because they bleed right like when they get stabbed or shot yeah and they never showed like a, a robotic skeleton or anything like that like i never and they they can succumb to human wounds you know like mm-hmm. drowning and just getting shot like not in the head yeah so i don't know if they're just so lifelike that they mimic human life yeah so it's almost a robot i think it's closer to clones than a robot but not like a direct clone like it's not like they're cloning a person they like figured out how to grow humans yeah it's weird yeah um so there is a world where these things exist yes and but it's for some reason now they aren't supposed to exist anymore there was something that happened i i honestly it takes place in what 2019 yes next year correct this technology is coming down the pipe i'm excited (laughs) uh basically harrison ford is known as a blade runner where he's like a hunter of these rep like certain replicants yeah. right like early ones or something along those lines well, i think they're okay so the tyrell company was making yes. them and they like started having issues so they like shut the whole thing down i believe right and uh that was I didn't, go on so harrison ford's character was retiring they don't call it murder. They yeah. call it retiring, which is a dumb line. They retire. Yeah, yeah it's, it's stupid. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't matter. <laughs> but uh, so he's going around and killing them or it, retiring them. But it because they were faulty and because they were having issues. But it seemed like the Tyrell company was still in business. Yeah, I don't think that they were shut down. I think it was a certain model but was... The bad ones. The newest ones, the Nexus 5s or 6s, 5s? 6s maybe? <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. I, I, I think the first one was 5s. Um, okay. They became like self-aware and started killing people. And their issue yeah. was they only had a four-year lifespan, which was, I think, intentional. 
they like made them with yeah. a four-year lifespan because they were worried that they were going to be, you know, take over the world or whatever. <laughs> Just in case. And uh, they're, they're, they killed a bunch of people and escaped, and their mission was to get a longer lifespan. But like that, So there's five of them. Yeah, well, there was four that escaped, but there was five of the Nexus Fives. So there's four that were like trying to get a longer lifespan. Um, uh, this movie, I, I hated it. It was it was so boring. It, <clears throat> it was so boring. I, the one thing that I I I did like for for being in the eighties mm-hmm. was like eighty two or eighty four. Yeah. I did enjoy the visuals. Yeah, well, that's the thing. That's, I thought the visuals were great. This is probably one of the best. Like everything was practical, right? None of it was yeah. computer generated. Um, I I right. think there are some stuff probably like in the updated versions like they touch up stuff but nothing like what george lucas did the old george lucas treatment <laughs> yeah nothing like that um but he they everything they did was pretty much practical which is yeah i thought it looked great super impressive I, any practical effects generally holds up versus cgi in the 90s mm-hmm. which looks terrible awful. like it was impressive at the it time awful but now you watch it and you're like, oh, this is awful. But you watch this and you're like, oh wow, this is this is beautiful. This looks really good. And it's because yeah. they put so much effort into that. And I think that's part of what people love. And the other thing, and I, I so we were talking a little bit about the uh, the different cuts, right? The uh, yeah. the different versions right. of the movie. The original US theatrical release is the one that had the narration which harrison ford did and it would be narrating okay. on top of the scenes and it is actually okay no that's not what i saw then yeah it's actually he did an intentionally bad job because he didn't like the idea and he was like oh if i do oh. a bad job they won't use it but they still really they, that's fine they still used it and uh i haven't seen that version but i have a theory that most people who love this movie saw that version first and hearing the the narration which was put in because they felt like it was too ambiguous without it makes yeah. you understand the world so much better and understand what's going yeah. on and the motivations and everything that's happening and when you go and see the the final cut or the director's cut or whatever cut you see without the narration you have that knowledge of what's happening so you can appreciate it by because you can understand what's going on better and so people who love this movie i i would venture to say that the majority of them have also seen the theatrical cut and can understand it more yeah that makes sense because i have no idea what was going on i was so confused no i had to look it up a few times I'm like, what? What's happening? Who? Who is this person? What did I just miss? Yeah. What? I, yeah. So, uh, so basically, he is supposed to be really good at telling if someone is a replicant or not. Yes. There's like these tests that they give them that supposedly, if you're a replicant, you will fill this test. Yeah. Uh, it like it trips them up. Com- like it's the yeah. They it's an emotional thing. Mm. Which I think is a cool so idea. Come to f- like you, you think about no, it. No, for sure. Like, oh yeah, that would be a good way to trip up um, uh, a robot, right? Because they wouldn't have an emotional intelligence. The questions would be like, "Oh, you found a tortoise in a desert." And he's like, "Why am I in the desert? What's going on?" Like, yeah, the, I think they could have done it better. Like, it seemed kind of easy to trip up the robots, but it's a cool idea nonetheless. I think that's the theme of the movie is a lot of it was a cool idea and it just wasn't, it didn't play out as cool as it could have been. So he's, he's, uh, he's at the Tyrell company and he's talking with the dude and then he brings out this girl and he wants, before he, before he is to give any, was it like future tests? He wants to test it out on when he says like a real person. Mm. So he so he has Harrison Ford uh, give the lady the test, 
and, and then it's revealed that she's also a replicant, but I don't think she knows it at that point, or maybe she did. I don't remember. She, I don't think she did, and I think that's what made her so convincing about not being it. Like, I, I was a little confused about the other replicants if they knew or not i believe they were aware that they were replicants and that's why they were like well yeah that's why they were seeking out extra life yeah but i don't know if they if they knew the whole time or if they found out and that's when they like started killing people you know what i'm saying like i don't know if every replicant is self-aware or if she was special because she wasn't self-aware but she she wasn't because she was like a special like super realistic model mm. i he I, i'm pretty sure he had said something like that like she is like top of the line like as realistic as it's ever been yeah so uh, uh rachel as in uh, rachel that's right so in classic 80s uh movie form they meet they've known each other for a day and they are in love they want to spend the rest of their lives together, and that's what I hate about '80s movies. Yeah. Like, realistically, did you see Ready Player One? Because they... they did the same thing in that. Yes. He, yep. Exactly. It's the he same knew thing. her for like five seconds and was already saying he loves her. I can I can give that guy some slack. He was like a teenager, right? He doesn't know any better. That's true. But this is Harrison Ford. This is a whole different story. I don't know. Harrison Ford seemed like I don't... a kid in this movie. Like, remember when he started doing <laughs> accents and stuff? Yeah, what was that about? I don't know. I don't know why he thought you, she would have recognized his accent. Do you think that was written into the movie or he just did that? I think definitely it was written into the movie. So, how long did they realistically know each other before they decided that they're going to run away together? Like, days? At the end of the movie, you talking about? By the end, by of the, the end movie, of the how movie. long had they known each other? Um, there was no way week? it was more than a week. Yeah, maybe a week. But I hate that. He, it drives me crazy. He like me tooed her within two days. He, she was like trying to leave, and he like slammed the door, and he's like, "Kiss me," and she didn't want to, and then he just kept being forceful until she did, and then they fell in love. Which is how you do it in the 80s. It's true. It actually... I, you have to... I just had a conversation. They don't know what they they don't know what they want. You have to show them what they with, want. With uh, Sean Chandler. From Sean Chandler Talks About Things. We talked about Rocky. The first Rocky. Uh-huh. And there's... Oh, it's the it's same the, thing. Yeah, it's That's identical it's so scene. It's, where it's something about the 80s. He's, she's trying to leave. He's holding the door closed. And he's like, I'm going to kiss you. You don't have to kiss me, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I'm going to kiss you. And it's looked at like it's a good thing. Like, oh, you look at, look how sweet he's being. I don't know. Yeah. Like he's like, he's so uh, romantic. The, he's a romantic. Yeah. It's weird. And it's like, no, he's a rapist. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't think there's a lot of room to judge the past on today's standards. But I am shocked no, for sure. that this was like passable. Like this was okay. It's it was shocking to me. You you're shocked that it was passable at the time or it's passable now? At the time. Like I'm I'm shocked. But that, but like you said, that kind of was the time. So yeah. I don't know if anyone saw it like no, that. No, that's what I mean. Like it's just surprising to me that it was okay back then. Like I, I definitely think that no one took you know two seconds to think about it back then but it's just how 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 is that possible it seems so clearly like a bad thing yeah now the same and and that's something we can see you can say the same thing with like slavery and racism and segregation and all that other type of stuff but like and it just seems weird here's a question though back in the 80s in these situations, do you think women didn't like it, but they're just like, ah, this is kind of what we have to deal with? Or do you think, like, someone, like, women would watch this and be like, wow, Rocky is a romantic? Or, like, I want a guy to treat me like Rocky did. Like, I think it's in the middle. I Yeah. I don't think – because I think there's a big um, 
culture will dictate taste in a lot of ways, right? And so yep. what is normal can be attractive. And if the idea was a man being overly aggressive in that way is desirable, especially when it's in media and movies and stuff like, oh, I want to be that. I want, I want someone to do that for me. But there, I think it's a really fine line of, you know, what is attractable and what is aggressive and what is like unwanted attention, you know? And so I think there is probably in the middle between those two things of like being desirable and being too far where, you know, it's like that it, it, I think it depends on your experience and who that happens with what people's uh, relationship to that idea would be. Yeah. I don't know. Things, eh, things have changed. That is true. <laughs> That's all. I <laughs> but yeah, so uh, Deckard so, so, is hunting down. Yeah. So going back to that, all the Nexus I fives. Just, I hate, I hate it. <laughs> it drives me so crazy when it's not only are like they like in love, but they're like inseparable. I will die for you if I need to. Yeah. Like that's that's nice, but is that? Uh, I don't know. It's just so. It it feels so. It takes me out of it. Like I feel like there's no stakes when. Like, I don't know. I'm like, oh, who cares? Like, you guys have been together a week. You'll move on. It's not a big deal if she's destroyed or if he dies. It's not, I don't know. It's so dumb to yeah. me. But anyways, uh, he's trying to track down these other replicants. So it's uh, it's filmed as a, that, a detective noir movie, right? Like an old school right. detective movie, but in with a sci-fi twist. But there is yeah, no detective work. It wasn't work. done very well. No. Like, I, I didn't understand from scene to scene why he was doing anything, why he was going from one place to the next, where he got any of his information from. It just kind of seemed like he had it. You know what I mean? Like, it didn't seem yeah. like he found anything. It didn't seem like he investigated anything. It just like, well, yeah, no, that we're doing that next. And I was just very confused at where we were in the story and where he was trying to get to. Like, it didn't seem like there was any big mystery. It was just like, I got to find these people. And he found the lady with the snake and got real creepy with her, like coming into her dressing room and talking about, oh, I want to search for holes because guys are probably trying to look at you while you change. (laughs) And then all of a sudden. Oh, he was being being so clever. And that was another thing that this happened a lot in this movie uh, is they would just be having a normal conversation and then they would be trying to kill each other, like just out of the blue, which I kind of get, right? Like if you're the the replicant and you're, you're trying to stay hidden, you're not going to attack. And as soon as you feel like you're found out, you're going to attack. But as a storytelling thing, it was very hard to keep up with because they would just be having this, you know, nonchalant conversation and then they're trying to kill each other. And it happened over and over and over to where every action scene was predicated by just a regular conversation and it 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 was very jarring each time it happened. Yeah, so let me ask you this question. Before you saw this movie, did you know that Edward James almost was in it? I don't know who that is. You don't know Edward James almost? Mm. Uh, stand and deliver. I think that's what it's called. Okay. He is an actor. Yeah, I figured that. That's all I got. Which character was he in this? Well, so I. Well, I mean, if you don't know who he is, it's not even a matter. He was. Uh, he was another Blade Runner. The origami guy. Oh. Yes. Okay. I did not know he was in this movie. Um, because he looked so different. I didn't realize it was him mm. until the f- the next movie. And he's in that one also, but he's obviously a lot older. So he's what I recognize him as. And they were referring to him as if he was in the first, I'm like, 
wait a second, who was he in the first one? And then I went back and looked. Yeah. I had no idea it was the same dude. Yeah, he was doing origami in 2049. That's how you knew. Yeah, exactly. Um, which I, I didn't quite get all the or- origami. Like, I know it was just like a character trait, and they use it as a reveal at the end, but like, it seemed like a lot of emphasis. Not a good one, yeah. though. A lot of emphasis on origami. Yeah, like, like it should have, should have been more, more origami. More origami. Um, but yeah, so Deckard is hunting down. He gets in the fight with the snake lady. She tries to murder him. He okay. Watching both of these movies, uh, Blade Runner should have a partner. I've none. Oh, none yeah. Of the times there's no reason. <laughs> none of the times he got in a fight with anyone, did he almost not die? Yeah, well, but here's the thing. Are they trained to do that, or is are they good Blade Runners because they can just detect replicants? They're not used to having to put up that big of a fight. Uh, based on what we see, every replicant fights back. Now, maybe... But, it, but is that normal? Well, that's what I'm saying. Or is that because those are the last remaining ones? They know they're being hunted? Maybe it's abnormal, but what the movies show us is that the replicants will always fight back and almost always win. Yeah. And because he he's losing the fight to the girl and I don't even remember what he does to get her off of her, off of him, but she takes off running. He's chasing her down the street and just blasts her away in the middle of a crowd. I was just like shocked. <laughs> like, how is this protocol (laughs) like (laughs) there's no way that's standard procedure (laughs) um and then he gets attacked pretty much right away by that first guy who doesn't have a chin at the uh it's not a taco truck but like a noodle truck (laughs) yeah like a noodle and noodle truck he's he's losing to him and then rachel shows up and kills him yeah then he fights the other one, the gymnast girl, which I did not understand that choice. Like, she's just doing backflips. Backflip fighting is her style. Because they were making them, like, bosses. Yeah, kind of. Each boss has their own, like, Their video game thing. bosses. It's, it's an 80s yeah. thing, yeah. But she's doing all these backflips and is choking him to death. Gets off of him, runs away 20 feet, and starts doing backflips at him to finish him off and gives him time to shoot her. Then she just sits on the ground screaming and flailing around, and then he shoots her four more times until she finally dies. Then the the Jesus one, I don't know, the the blonde guy, the the final boss, I did not get it i didn't understand what they were fighting about i get i get that deckard was trying to kill him and it seemed like he was trying to kill deckard but he kept saving him and kept giving him chances and he stuck his head through the wall at one point and just like watching him and just having a conversation until deckard tries to hit him with a pipe i don't know it was here's the thing it was awful Is really boring. Um, and the other the other thing yeah. for how technical, like outstandingly they did with the the technical aspects of the movie visually, the sound yeah. was horrible. The sound production was awful. You could hear the mics cut off from the uh, ADR from the stuff that they recorded after the fact. You could hear uh-huh. there's like this distinct like click uh, where the sound just drops out because it's. What it is is the background noise, right? You can hear that, like this, like a hum, and that just cuts off. And so it's like that was jarring. And then the Foley stuff, which is the uh, the sound design, the sound effects for like steps and change, and you know, background talking and all that stuff, because you don't want that bleeding into your main, the main stuff. That was all muffled. And so stuff that was happening right in the foreground of the movie, like there's one scene where he throws someone into like a cart. It sounds, <clears throat> excuse me, it sounds like it, it happened, you know, 20 feet away. <laughs> he threw them 50 feet uh, off. Yeah. 
and then the the dialogue was way lower than the music so i was like uh, oh that drove me nuts that was okay so i'm not one to typically find like the the sound stuff that doesn't usually stand out but this i hate when there is background music that is as loud or louder than the dialogue where you can't hear it but you can't turn anything up because it just makes the freaking music louder drives me crazy and then they had uh, japanese language and so yeah. There was a lot of times where I'm like, do I just not understand what's being said or are they speaking another language? Because then there was like yep. the guy you were saying from Stand and Deliver had a really thick accent, didn't understand half the words he said. And there was another scene. To be honest, I thought he was Japanese at first. Where a bunch of kids were like trying to steal parts off the car and they're like yeah. so quiet. I was like, I don't know if I'm supposed to understand what's being said or not. <laughs> and I was just like, I, I ended up seriously getting a migraine from straining so hard to listen and understand what was being said that it just made me hate this movie even more. That's nice. Yeah. Way to go, Ford. <laughs> and I I don't know. I, I'm not a big Harrison Ford fan, I think is part of the issue. I, I don't really care about Star Wars. I really don't like Indiana Jones. And so seeing this, I was just like, man, this doesn't do anything for me. But what about Air Force One? The best movie I've ever seen. I thought um, so. America. Well, I like you. I like Harrison Ford. I'm not like under some impression he's like one of the greatest, yeah. but he's he's decent. Well, um, his character was so weird in this. Like, I, well, the whole everyone was weird yeah. in this. I just didn't get. I don't. I don't get the love for this movie. I understand yeah. appreciating the visuals, but as a story, it it was not good. I did not have fun with it. No. And I don't mind. Like, I don't think it's bad to like it. I don't think you're dumb if you enjoy it. And I do. I just, like, I don't see it. I expected to like it. I expected to be, you know, really into it. And it it was really not a fun watch. Also, the editing was yeah. was awful. You You could not, I could not keep up with where they were in space of the, the scene. Because they were cutting so fast, it was like, yeah, every every take seemed like it was only like two or three seconds, and then it'd cut, and then they'd cut, and then they'd cut, and I was just having a really hard time keeping up with what was going on. Yeah, it just it, it wasn't good. Yeah. Um, I it, it there was nothing enjoyable about it except for like I said, I the visuals were really the only thing that stood out to me. The rest, it was just, it was boring. Yeah, it's really boring. The uh, so finally Deckard kills off all the replicants and is retiring again. So he, in the beginning, he says, "You know, I I quit walking into here and I double quit leaving, something like that, something dumb." But he <laughs> he was already retired, but they brought him back in because he was the best at it. He was the best Blade Runner, and. Right. At the end, he goes and like wraps everything up with them. And the guy from Stand and Deliver is like, it's too bad that, you know, Rachel's going to have to die. And so he like panics and takes off and finds her and she's still alive. And he's like, we need to go. And when they're leaving, he steps on the uh, unicorn, origami unicorn, which was yeah. the guy saying like, I was here. I could have killed her. I, I could have killed her, and, and I, I didn't. didn't. And I don't know if it's I'm going to. Here's a head start because they they go on the run, right? They for the rest of their lives right. they're on the run. Or if he's saying like I could have done it, I but would, I chose not to, like just get out of here type of thing. I'm just gonna look the yeah. other way. So yeah. I, I didn't quite know. That's how I took it, but it doesn't really no. matter, I guess. But uh, what's done is done. Ridley Scott has a theory. That Deckard okay. is a replicant. What was your opinion? Because it's it's heavily oh. contest, contested. People don't like that idea. Uh, I kind of thought, like at, at one point in the movie, I don't remember what she she Rachel like, asked oh. him, "Have you ever taken a test?" And I think that was kind of the only thing that pointed to it. Maybe that's what I was thinking of. I, I remember thinking, "Oh, I wonder if he is." A replicant, but then they didn't really do anything else with it, so I kind of forgot yeah, about it. I, I don't see any reason why he should or needs to be one. 
it doesn't make sense from a no. story point. Uh, if he had been, you know, retired at the end of the movie, it would have been interesting, like a interesting twist. By an, by another blade. Yeah, runner. like if they were using him to do it all, and then like, all right, yeah, you know, like Looper, right? And we got to close your loop now. See ya. That would have yeah. been kind of interesting, but they didn't do anything with it, so it seemed goofy to try to put forward that idea. Yeah, I don't know. I I I'd say no. no. Really, Scott does not know anything. <laughs> um, because Harrison Ford thinks it's a bad idea, and I believe the writers of the movie think it's a bad idea, and Ridley Scott was like, oh, I'm the director, so it's a good idea. Um, but yeah. But did he direct it like that, or is that something he came out and said I think it was after like, the fact. What if, yeah. what if this instead? It's like, I think he heard the fan theory and was like, yeah, let's do that. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Overall, Blade Runner, no. yay, nay, or do you fall? Uh, n- nay. Uh, if I'm going to give it a rating out of, what's our new rating? Negative 5 to 5. Negative 10 to positive 10? Okay. Uh, I'm going to give it like a negative 2. Yeah, I, I'm right around there too. It, uh, it, it was so difficult to watch. I, like I said, I, yeah. I ended up with a migraine at the end of watching it, and it, that's not a good sign. Like, No. <laughs> No. I should not have a headache trying I would, to I would understand say no. what's happening. And maybe it's my fault. Yeah. Maybe I am a dumb dumb, but I did not enjoy this. But I mean, that's beside the point because I also <laughs> did enjoy it, and, and I am not. Everyone a dumb knows dumb. you're not a dumb dumb. Exactly. Well, if yeah, I, I'm going to give it a negative two. Anything that's below a zero on the scale doesn't ever deserve a, a, another rewatch. No, again. I don't think so. In yeah. my opinion, it's it's not rewatchable yeah. whatsoever. Unless there's like new information or something that I didn't know or just misunderstood. Like Harrison Ford is a replicant. <laughs> yeah, that well that makes it even less it's, of a reason to watch. Yeah, now it's a negative five. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. If, if if it's under a zero, I'm just not. I have no desire to rewatch it. It was hard enough because I, I considered watching the theatrical cut with the narration to see if my theory about it un- making more sense is true i just uh-huh. can't can't care enough like <laughs> the the problem is you risk watching that whole thing again and that it not really changing yeah, your mind and and then you've just sat there and wasted all it that was time. pretty long too yeah it's like what two hours and 15 two hours and 20 something or something like, like that, that. Yeah, it was a it was a way too way too yeah. long for sure uh, if you've seen Blade Runner and you agree or disagree, let us know. Let us know if you agree or if you disagree with us, if you like it. What yeah. do you like about it? What is good about it? What am I not Please. understanding or missing? Please explain that to me. But uh, And if you say the love story, <laughs> I will not be happy. Yeah, the, love, the love story is weird. But... Uh, yeah, uh, follow us on Twitter at I Seen That Pod. Like us on Facebook, and we'll be back in a couple of days with our next episode. Or a couple seconds. Dum, dum, dum. Depends on how fast you're yeah, If you're watching the live stream, we'll be back in a couple seconds. If you are watching or listening to the podcast after the fact, you don't get to know unless you go over to Patreon. You can listen to it all right now. Booyah.